it's Ian from RTL here. Hope you're all well. Welcome to Thursday's uh, album art workshop. And today it's a little bit, well it's not strange, but it's, I was reading an article uh, a couple of weeks ago and it and came through and there was this 12 famous artists that designed album covers. I thought, oh, let's have a look at this. And I thought, yeah, I think I can. Uh, they were just put in a random order, and I thought, oh, I can rank these. So here we go. So I've got 12 for you today, all designed by artists. Uh, so coming in at number 12 is an album cover designed by Stanley Donwood. Uh, it was Radiohead's A Moon Shaped Pool. From 2016 and he's been cover he's uh, done quite a few of their covers since the Benz uh, this one he, he said he designed the artwork from a barn near the studio where the band recorded and was able to listen to their sessions and react to it in the moment of the ending acrylic yeah I don't get it actually, but I do like the cover. But I don't know how these artists think anyway. It could have had a bit of colour to it though. Man, maybe a little bit better. But hey ho, he's an artist, he's allowed to do what he likes. Okay then, coming in at number 11 is by photog photographer Robert Mablethorpe. And it's Patty Smith's Horses, released in 1975. Basically, he shot, took this picture at his apartment in New York using the natural light and a Polaroid camera. Remember them? Click inst, their first ever instant pictures. Well, they weren't instant, you had to wait about 10 minutes. But that was good in them days and it's a quite a good if that's a Polaroid that's a great picture it's a good album anyway so uh, I do like that picture she looks so young though uh, looks so young Patty Smith dearie dearie okay coming in number 10 uh, this one's by Andy Warhol uh, the Velvet Underground and Nico's the Velvet Underground <laughs> can you do us a picture and Andy yeah and all he does is put some bloody banana <laughs> but it's an iconic iconic isn't it he made a lot of money of doing a painting of a tin of soup it's a good album though very good album uh, I think it's coming up in the classic album review um, okay, coming in at number nine. This is a single cover uh, done by Keith Harding, or Herring, sorry. Uh, it is Without You from David Bowie in 1983. Bowie was a great fan of uh, of Keith Haring and he's got many. He bought many of his pieces, so he asked him to do this. It's quite simple, really, isn't it? Without you, very. It's amazing that a very simple drawing can have a lot of meaning. That's not a bad cover at all. Okay, coming in at number eight. This is by the legendary Banksy, the street artist, and it was for Bur Blur's Think Tank from two thousand and three. Now, this is incredible. That picture, when Banksy sold it, it went for £75,000. This is in 2007, which is about $110,000. That's quite a pretty good picture. Can't believe that something like that would fetch a lot of money, though. There you go. Okay, coming in number seven. Uh, this is by H.R. 
Geiger. Uh, and it's Debbie Harry's debut solo album from 1981, Cuckoo. Bit different. A very iconic about cover though. It's a great picture of uh, Debbie. Bit different. Okay. Now this next one I've never heard of. Uh, it's something that I'm going to look into, of course. It was from 2010, and it was created by the cartoonist Adrian Tommy. And the band's End Time, and it's called End Times, and it's called Eels. Uh, I don't know what sort of music it is, but I do like that cover. That is pretty cool. Nice. That's how we all feel, I think, at the moment. <laughs> pretty good. Okay, coming number five is by Terry Richardson. Uh, it's a band called Nerd Nerds, and it's called Nothing. A bit Vietnamy here. Very good, very meaningful. Pretty cool. Okay, coming in at number four, uh, this is by Shepard Fairey, who is a street artist as well, uh, and it's the Sp Smashing Pumpkins 2007 album, Zeitgeist. I love that cover, that is really, really good. Very colourful. Okay, hey, coming in at number three, uh, this is by Jeff Coons, uh, who's a sculpture, and it's for Art Pop by Lady Gaga. And he created that sculpture. Although she's got no clothes on, it's still quite um, tasteful. She's a fantastic, I think she's a fantastic artist. I don't I don't like her style of music but she likes Metallica and that's good enough for me yeah she I, I think she's a very talented young lady okay then coming at number two this is gonna surprise you this is uh, uh, by Salvador Dali Dali uh, this is for, for Jackie Gleason now I didn't know that Jackie Gleason made records all I know him is of as Sheriff Juice was it Sheriff Justice P. Bruford from the Smokey and the Bandit films? But that's a pretty cool cover, actually. I like that painting. That's the sort of thing I'd have up in my uh, on my wall. Never heard the album. Came out in 1955. Los Echo. Okay then, number one is done by comic book artist Dave Gibbons. And it was for the debut album of Call the Shaker, K, in 1996. I love that. Very, very good. I mean, if you look on the, the famous people on there, Lord Kitchener, Catherine Hepburn, even King Kong's on there, Martin Luther's there, uh, and all surrounding the K. Great, great cover. Well, that was short and sweet, but I thought it was interesting that these artists have actually done something like this. Okay, well, we've just got an update show to do for today, um, but then tomorrow it's live day, and it's that special one because of us reaching 10,000. We're going to be doing the status quo live albums. And then in the afternoon, we're going to review Sensu, the new Iron Maiden album. I've had a, listened to it a few times now and I feel that I can give you my opinions of it. So I will see you later for the little uh, update. Take care for now.